Hey kiddos, welcome to another day of English Language Arts. Today's special feature, the last day we have for visiting the writing process for this unit. We are going to be working on lesson 35 today. We have, in review, gone through the brainstorming process, racer, and writing our first draft whenever we are going to write a response to a prompt. We then visited revising our first response, editing it, writing a second draft, and then having someone else proofread it. And drum roll, today we are going to work on publishing and sharing our response to our prompt. So, ladies and gentlemen, lesson 35, publishing your response. Today, it's all about polishing, making something beautiful to present it, making something very easy to read, at least for someone who is thoughtful and truly thinking about their reading, and then turning in our final draft. This is the last step of the writing process, publishing. When you are publishing, ladies and gentlemen, you, the writer, are going to finalize your thoughts. You're going to check that all of the steps in the writing process are complete. Chances are they are because you couldn't have gotten there or where you are today with a beautiful document in front of you without going through the steps, right? You are going to review and rewrite your written document until you are 100% satisfied that it is the very best you can give in the way of a response to a prompt or a question you were given. And then when you are finished writing, you are going to share your response with your teacher. Now, ladies and gentlemen, publishing in the future could also include creating a PowerPoint, Google Docs, slides. Um, you could build something and present it. Publishing isn't just writing something down and turning over a beautifully written copy. It could be many other options. But for the purpose of Unit 1 and answering our text-dependent analysis regarding Unit 1, we are going to turn in our written response, our published written response. It is the last step of the three-step writing process. Now, what I've done is I've included for you a checklist, and you do have an option of clicking on this and having your own copy that you can save in your documents. But when we are publishing or ready to publish and create and finalize our last draft, we should probably go through the checklist. Let's look at the checklist very quickly together. We're going to read the instructions again. Have we answered our prompt and our question? Do you have one main idea that is clearly stated and supported by the whole rest of your response or your essay? Is there a clear relationship between your paragraphs? Meaning, did you use transition words to connect your paragraphs so that they flowed, even though each paragraph is a little bit different than the one before or following it? Did you connect your ideas? Have you offered enough details or evidence? Remember the rule of three is ideal. Three details that you explain, three pieces of evidence that you explain. Is your writing clear? Have you avoided really big words and awkward sentences? Are you using language that your friends could understand? Are you satisfied with your introduction? Are you satisfied with your conclusion words? Are you ready to bring this all to a close? Do you feel that you answered the question well? Have you had someone 
proofread your draft aloud at least once to catch grammatical or punctuation errors. Have you read your essay aloud at least once to hear what you wrote and possibly fix something that doesn't quite make sense? Have you used words that you know the meaning of? Is your punctuation correct? Is your spelling correct? Do you feel good about your writing? If you can put a check next to all of those, your final draft is probably ready to turn in. And in most cases, we would say it's ready to present. So with our final draft, I do want to review with you very quickly what a good final response may look like. Now, your teacher may have a different final response format. This is one that we'll be using in eighth grade um, over at Southern Middle School. And I've got an idea. Most middle schools have something very, very, very similar to this. But I wanted to give you guys a format of what a good response will look like. Remember, you don't get a second chance ever to make a good first impression. And our goal here, kiddos, is to give you the opportunity to respond to a question with your own thoughts, your own experiences, your own evidence, building your thoughts, and presenting yourself as a future high schooler and adult. So what we're going to do very quickly is I'm just going to glaze over this form. You have your own copy. If you click on the red X, there is a link there that will share this form with you in large format. Feel free to use it. If you make a copy of it, you could possibly use it to even complete your response. I did add some red lines. Anytime you are going to turn something in officially, it helps to follow a few rules. One of the rules is having the margins on your paper at one inch. The left margin should be at one inch. The right margin should be at one inch. You should be at least one inch down from the top and one inch up from the bottom of your paper. You might want to go in and check your margins and make sure you have them set to be one inch. You usually, in this type of a response, would want to add some sort of an image, some sort of a picture that represents your thoughts and your response to the question you are answering or to the prompt you are responding to. So you can go out there and find an image and add it into your document. You always want to type your title in your document. You want to make sure you are giving your response some form of a title. You don't necessarily want to give away your main idea. You don't want to necessarily give away anything that someone can read in your response. Everyone should have to read for your response. But give yourself a title for your response. Under that, you're going to place your name and your class, period. And then under that, you're going to place your date. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once you have your tab set and you begin to type your response, you want to make sure that you indent. Go in five spaces. So when you go to type your first paragraph, you're going to space, 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 space. I kind of feel like I'm teaching typing. You're going to go in five spaces to begin each new paragraph. As you see, this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph, and this paragraph were each indented five spaces. And then you type the rest of your paragraph, and it'll go out to the far left. That allows the reader to see that you are truly starting a new paragraph. Another good idea is to make sure you double space in between your paragraphs. That lets your teacher know that you are starting a new idea. Now your teacher is going to see if you connected those ideas, but it's a good reminder to double space in between the paragraphs so that you're able to see your own paragraphs and see each of your paragraphs on its own.
So that's about it for formatting. Um, I've given you this little overview so that you may follow it and use it and hopefully present yourself in a most mature and future ninth grade Reading Red Knight manner. So I wish you luck in typing your final draft. And that's pretty much the lesson for the day. It's just make yourself, make your response appear to be the very best you can. You don't get a second chance for a first impression. And when you turn in something as a final draft, that's the impression you are going to leave. So from here, what you guys are going to do is you are going to type your final draft today. You are going to take a very quick formative assessment to review the writing process. And when you submit your final draft to your teacher, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a thumbs up, and keep on learning because you are. You are becoming very, very successful in all that you do by simply getting it done and doing it well. Have a great day. Take care. And we will see you for Unit 2 in English and Language Arts. Have a good day.